Adventure is in my blood. Finding treasures big or small and having fun is what it's all about. With my wife Melissa and our three kids, life is pretty full. But there isn't a mountain we can't climb together. This isn't your ordinary antique store. My name is Alex Archibald and this is Curiosity Inc. I'm home, honey! Nothing. Well, today's episode may have gone to the dogs, but I have another plan. I am waiting on a tow truck to come and pull the Rolls Royce out of the garage and take it off to the paint shop. I'm going to do some prep work on the car and we start to make some real progress, so follow along. There she goes, loaded up and on her way to the paint shop where hopefully they can do something with it. It looks a little bit better out in the daylight. That body doesn't look too bad, but there are still lots of spots on it where, you know, I can see there's a dent on the lower pan there. It's gonna need a good going over, but they said they're up to the task. I guess we'll find out. With the car out of the garage, I can finally start to do a little bit of cleaning in here. It's been very cold and anytime I come out here I've kind of just ended up with these little piles of parts and pieces that they've come in. My toolbox is a mess. I'm going to spend some time today kind of going through and cleaning up my garage and trying to make room for the car when it comes back. There's also a lot of parts and pieces that I'm not going to be able to use like the crusty old broken dashboard and other bits that um, are so far gone they're not worth saving. I can do a good clean up in here. Uh, fold the table down and really start to get things prepped and ready for the car to return. I had a package arrive today. It is brand new bumpers for the car. They're high polished stainless steel. Never have to worry about them rusting again. Front and rear set. There's no instructions on how to assemble them. Uh, I know there's bumper overriders, there's center pieces, and then there's the corner pieces, but I don't know which is the front and which is the back. Luckily, I've got a complete front bumper in the garage, so I can assemble that, whatever's left over, you'd think, would be for the back. Spent some time organizing the bins into the various types of parts they are. I'll get to that later on, but this is what I came out to have a look at. Okay, this is the front bumper of the car. I can see it takes the short bracket or the short uh, center piece in the middle and I've got uh, I did order some extra brackets because I didn't have those to mount it on the car um, but I can see the end that I need too so I'm going to try and assemble this <laughs> I have to pay attention to the details too like this little this little ridge that is the top Let's see if I can't put one of these together and get it right. Got all the pieces that I need to assemble the front bumper. Here's the middle section with that little indentation for the license plate that goes down below. Two front bumper uh, ets, bumperettes, and the corner pieces. Now before I put this all together, I'm going to kind of dry fit it and make sure that I've got all the pieces in the right spot. They were kind enough to provide some brand new bolts, which is handy, and even the little rubber pieces that you need that go uh, around the edge so it doesn't scratch up the bumper. See if I can't figure this puzzle out. Once you kind of figure out which side goes where, you have to get the holes lined up just right and then stick the other end on, bolt them all through. I've got that side kind of roughed in right now. I don't have it tightened up all the way. But I'm going to try and get this one lined up now. Two, one more to go. That guy's got to go through there, and I'll tighten them up. And then the front bumper should be just about done. And yes, I am building these indoors in our living room, but that's one bumper completely done and just about ready to install in the car. I've got one more to go, the rear bumper, and that'll be at least two less things I have to worry about before getting the car together. But that sure looks nice, all that shiny chrome. 10 o'clock at night, I am lying on the floor, working on a Rolls Royce bumper. Melissa is on the phone visiting with my sister, Heather, and uh, starting to get kind of tired, but I am making some good progress. I've got um, the front bumper completely put together and the back bumper is coming along nicely. It um, is kind of slow going, but I expected that. Uh, after I get the main part of the bumper put on, I'm gonna get the brackets in place. 
And then it's just a matter of mounting on the car. Well, after it's painted, of course, but long ways to go until that happens. But for now, I'm gonna try and wrap this up and call it a night. Tomorrow, I'm gonna be meeting the paint shop to see exactly what this car is gonna require, but hopefully that will all come together. And in the meantime, I've got some work to do getting some of the parts prepped. Did the bumpers last night. Now I've got all the signal lights and some of the other bracketry and bits and pieces that are kind of dirty and in need of some TLC. We're gonna go through the box here and start to clean things up. This box has all the parts I took out of the trunk. I cleaned off some, this one has not. You can see that's labeled as the right rear tail light. It's gonna need some cleaning, but to do that, I've gotta disassemble it. There's screws down inside there. I'm gonna take that all apart, get some of the, uh, loose debris out from the inside and get this thing cleaned up, prepped, and ready to mount back on the car. One screw! Ah, ah, ah. Five more to go! Got the tail light apart. I've noticed one problem though, well two. Uh, one, the rubber seal that would normally go in here is missing. That's because I threw it out. It had shrunk down like a shrunken head. It was like a, you know, a tenth the size of what it should be. It was gone. Uh, the other is that this chrome kind of reflector business that is meant to go in here is all flaking off. Uh, but never fear, since this was made, they have new technologies, aka they have uh, reflective chromey type spray paint. I can touch that back up. But I'm going to clean off all this stuff in here, wash this all up, and um, I can spray that back. Anyway, there's work to be done here. I'm going to start by cleaning. Up the tail lights, I noticed a problem. There's a hole in my tail light, dear Liza, dear Liza. Uh, and when you think, you know, maybe you shouldn't be washing car parts in your kitchen sink, well, they're not that bad, and it's a stainless sink, I'm gonna wash it. Does Melissa know? Yes, Melissa knows. She's sitting there all approvingly, like, <laughs> uh, I'm laughing, but I'll enjoy the doghouse later on. Um, I think I might have spare tail lights that I took off the parts here. I'm gonna go check and see if they're better than these ones. Okay, these are the parts I took off of the parts car. And let's see what I have. Let's see if they're in a little bit better condition. Oh, well, you know what the problem is? The tail light's slightly different. You can tell already they changed the tail lights. So that's not good. Those aren't gonna work. Headlights are the same. Hmm. Got the tail lights reassembled, re-silvered the inside there so the reflector should work nicely. I'm putting a little scratch remover polish on it so that when it comes out, it looks a little shinier and a little brighter. Something kind of like that. And I'll probably go over after it one more time just to bring that gloss up even more. But these things are starting to come up pretty nice. Always good to have the little accessories ready to go before the car comes back for paint, just speeds things all up. There they are, waxed up, polished, ready to go. Next stop will be on the car. I will have to order some new uh, rubber gaskets for the uh, bases, the plinth gaskets. So those ones are a little worn out, but these taillights cleaned up really nicely. This morning, I'm headed over to the paint shop to uh, talk to the guys there and see exactly what they think this car is gonna take to get it back in uh, shiny, nice looking condition. Feel a little bit guilty, I'm taking the ambulance. The ambulance needs a bit of work. It kind of feels like taking all of your kids to the uh, to the clothing store and just buying them uh, one of them a pair of new pants. <laughs> uh, so I have a little bit of guilt about that this morning. But I want you kids to know that I love you all the same. I do. But uh, your older brother here, he's the one who's getting new pants today. All right. Well, I'm sure the ambulance is gonna forgive me. At some point, I'll have to get some body work done on this car, maybe get a new paint job. This is not gonna be cheap when I do this thing. This is a tank, this car. Um, but we'll get an idea, at least at the body shop, what these guys have to say. Um, somebody had started the body work on this car before, but the problem is it sat for so long that some of the primer is cracked and chipped and uh, it's got a couple little dents in it now. Um, so it's not in great condition, even though it doesn't have any rust, it's not in fantastic shape. We'll see. So here it is, back in a paint shop after more than a decade of being out. Um, definitely in the light, you can start to see there's some little, you know, dents there, a little spot there. 
It's the problem with doing body work on a car and then shoving it outside, things happen again. What the body shop does, and I actually do this if I'm doing my own body work, is you mark off all the areas that need attention where there's been some lacquer crackle in the paint, where there's little dents. Um, it looks like concerned Charlie Brown eyebrows, but <laughs> that's what you do. You mark off all the spots that need work so that the um, when the body man comes along, it's really easy to identify. Plus that helps us figure out exactly what the car is gonna need. And there's little bits like underneath here. You'll never see that, but there's a bit of a dent on the bottom. Overall though, the car is very solid and that's what drew me to it. Um, hopefully next time I see this car, we'll come and do a little, uh, a few progress reports on it, but uh, it, I'm excited to see this car shiny and silver. It's been a long time since this thing has looked good and it's overdue for a paint job. Okay, well that's it. And you're probably asking yourself, why are you doing the body work now? Well, it takes about a month to get paint and body work done. I'm also waiting right now for the upholstery and carpet kits to come in. Um, so I would be stalled on the project right now if I didn't move ahead with something. Um, so I've decided to get the body work done uh, so that when it comes back from the body shop, I'll be able to put everything all together. Anyway, normally you wouldn't do the body work before you do uh, a whole bunch of the mechanical. But the plus side of doing it this way is that the car is actually worth uh, more money once it's painted and reassembled even non-running than it would be is if it looked like a sack of hammers <laughs> and drove nicely. Um, so there is some method to my madness here. It is, um, you know, going to be a, a process to get this all to come together. But today was a big day. It's at the body shop. And hopefully we'll start to see this car uh, shaping up over the next few episodes as the body shop does the uh, the priming and the work, the body and, uh, and then the paint. So stay tuned for more episodes as this uh, once raccoon eaten Rolls Royce slowly transforms itself into something much better. Appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button if you haven't already. We'll see you all soon. Bye for now.